The Man Who Traded a Paperclip for a House There's an episode of the popular American TV sitcom The Office, in which The Office holds their own boot sale in their warehouse. The Office's resident eccentric character, Dwight Schrute, then uses his expert bartering skills to trade a paperclip for a telescope. For Stanley's crap, for Ryan's junk, for Creed's garbage, for a very cute squid that Aaron happened to have. Nice. Not bad, right? That is, before he loses it all to a prank by his fellow worker, Jim. Packet of beans. So I traded the telescope for it. And I can, I can just go buy another telescope. But that's beside the point. While watching this episode, you may think, wow, that was impressive, but not very realistic. Surely no one can just keep trading up items and end up with an item worth 1,000 times more than the original item, right? Right? Well, it turns out you can. And that's exactly what Kyle McDonald did across 12 months from July 2005 to July 2006. Kyle McDonald was a Canadian blogger who one day in 2005 set up a website by the name of One Red Paperclip. The premise of the website was to see how far McDonald could trade up his paperclip for bigger and better items. As for his drive behind starting the website, he said that he was inspired by a popular childhood game called Bigger Better. Here's a quick rundown of the game. This will help you to understand the method McDonald would later use to pull off his incredible trades. The game is usually played as an icebreaker or team building exercise. A group of people are split into two teams and each team is given an item. They then have to try and trade up these items for better things. Whichever team has the more valuable item at the end wins. Well, Kyle McDonald wanted to see if he could take this game and actually achieve the same result in real life. McDonald made his first of 14 trades on July 14, 2005 in Vancouver, Canada, where he traded the red paperclip for a fish-shaped pen. Well, even though it was a slightly odd item, it was a start. Then the same day, he made his second trade up, where he traded the pen for a hand-sculpted doorknob in Seattle, Washington. Then, only a week and a half later, on the 25th of July, McDonald traded the doorknob for a Coleman camp stove while on a trip to Amherst, Massachusetts with a friend. The trading then stopped for a couple of months until September of the same year. On the 24th of September, McDonald traveled to California and exchanged the stove for a Honda generator. Three weeks later, on the 16th of November, while in Queens, New York, he tried to trade the generator for an instant party. This was essentially a neon Budweiser sign and an empty drinks keg that could be filled with whatever drink he wanted at a later date. A party on the go, if you will. However, this trade actually took two attempts, as McDonald's generator was briefly confiscated by the New York Fire Department when he tried the trade for the first time. New York City, the, uh, yep, the hotel down there was confiscated, was, uh, was leaking gas. Okay. On the 8th of December, he traded the instant party for a snowmobile from famous Canadian comedian Michael Barrett. This is where it all starts to really kick up a notch. From this point on, the exchanges became a lot more lucrative and valuable, especially the last few trades. Within that same week, he exchanged the snowmobile for a two-person holiday to Yak, Canada. I will go anywhere in the world except for Yak, British Columbia. <laughs> so I thought, well, that's safe. No one's ever going to make an offer from there anyways. That was set to take place in February of 2006. Now we're moving into 2006. And in about eight months' time, Kyle McDonald would have a house in his possession. Roughly a month before the vacation, McDonald sold the second place on the trip for a box van, which may at first seem like a downgrade, but it looks like it worked out fine for Kyle in the long run. On the 22nd of February, he made the most insane deal so far, a record deal with a famous Canadian label by the name of Metalworks. Some people spend years trying to get a record deal, and Kyle McDonald got it through a paperclip. On April 11th, he traded this record deal with the American singer-songwriter for a whole year's worth of rent in an apartment in Phoenix, Arizona. Now we're coming up on the last few trades. I want to remind you that he got to this point by trading a single red paperclip. Two weeks later, on April 26th, he traded the year's worth of rent for an afternoon with one of the most famous rock stars of all time, Alice Cooper. That is an insane feat, and you'd think McDonald would stop here. But he didn't. In fact, he traded this incredible opportunity for a snow globe? Yes, you heard me right. He traded an afternoon with Alice Cooper for a motorized kiss, as in the band kiss, snow globe. A snow globe. Again, this sounds like an obvious downgrade, but it turns out that someone really wanted that snow globe. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. I think I said, no, I need this. 
as on the 2nd of June, he gave it to Hollywood actor and director Corbin Burnson for their role in a Hollywood film. Again, something some people would spend their whole lives trying to get, and McDonald got it through a paperclip. And this brings us to the final transaction. On July 5th, 2006, Kyle McDonald traded that movie role for a house. More specifically, a two-story farmhouse in Kipling in the Canadian province of Saskatchewan. Sadly, Kyle McDonald no longer lives in the house. But regardless, it's an awesome example of how, if you have enough determination and patience, you can literally get anything you want, even if you start out with basically nothing. That was the insane story of how a man traded one red paperclip for a house.